Focus stacking can be a great way to really take your photography to the next level, but a lot can go into taking successful stacks. And in this video, I'm going to give you some tips and some things to consider that will hopefully help improve your focus stacks while you are out in the field. The first thing you want to do when you find a subject is to give yourself a moment to observe the scene. Consider a few things when observing such as is the subject in a good spot or position, the type of bug you are trying to photograph, and possible compositions and angles you want to go for. Knowing what you are trying to photograph is very important because different bugs will behave differently when you try and take photos of them. Once you start to get familiar with the kinds of bugs in your area, you will pretty much know how they will behave when you approach them to try and take photos of them. So I highly recommend if you are a dedicated macro shooter to document and ID the subjects you photograph so you, so you will know for future reference. There are apps you can download that will help you ID subjects. I use iNaturalist, which is a free to download app that is great for that. Another big tip for successful focus stacks is to stabilize your camera to the best of your ability. Whether you shoot handheld like I do or you use a tripod, camera stabilization is the biggest key for a successful focus stack because if you move your camera during the stack, it will throw off the alignment and you will have to start all over again. For this photo attempt, I was photographing a beetle that was on one of the leaves and for stabilization, I had the leaf it was on in one hand and I rested the front of the lens on the hand holding the leaf. I have another focus stacking video which goes more in depth on stabilization tips and my recommended flash settings. I will have a link to that video in the description and at the end of this video if you are interested in that. Tip number three is to always have a plan when you are out shooting. And what I mean by that is just to think about the kind of shot you want before shooting and try different angles and compositions. For this shot, I was photographing a spider whose web I accidentally ran into. And for my first shot attempt, I shot it while it was on the sidewalk, but I didn't like the angle. For macro shots, when the subject is looking directly at the camera, I always try to get exactly eye level with the subject I'm photographing because it just makes for more interesting photos. So I grabbed a leaf for it to crawl on and I used a stick to place the leaf on so I could get eye level with it. Stacks like this when the subjects are on the ground are the easiest since you have the most stability while laying down like this so this stack wasn't too difficult.
tip number four is to know when to attempt a focus stack and when not to. This is when observing and knowing what you are trying to photograph comes into play. If you notice that your subject is active and moving a lot, then I don't recommend attempting a stack because if you take a stack and you notice that your subject moved, then that movement will show up in the stack photo, which can ruin a shot. I already knew once I spotted this jumping spider that I wasn't going to go for any stacks because jumping spiders are usually very active and never sit in one spot long. So my goal was to go for eye level single shots. With a little patience, your subjects will sometimes sit still long enough for you to attempt a focus stack. That's what happened with this jumping spider I found near the previous one. It was moving around at first, but it stopped moving a few times and I was able to get these stacks. Here, I was photographing a pair of Japanese beetles that were on the leaves. I know from past experiences with these beetles that some of them can be skittish. It's like a 50-50 with them because the beetle from earlier in this video was chill and didn't move. But with these, since it was two of them instead of one, I decided to be extra cautious and not grab the branch they were on for extra stability because I thought doing that would startle them. So instead, I had my left elbow tucked into my side and I just tried to stay as still as possible. In situations like this, I'll even hold my breath while taking photos. In a future video, I plan on going a lot more in depth on focus bracketing and tips on how to get the most out of it. Tip number five is to take multiple stacks if possible. I know it's not always possible with every bug you come across, but for those static subjects that you know aren't going to move, I recommend taking multiple stacks. It's really easy sometimes to mess up during the photo taking of a stack. Maybe you missed a section on your subject or the subject itself moved. That's why it's important to look through your photos while you are at the scene to make sure you are leaving with a quality stack. Having more than one stack to look through will just give you a better chance at having a successful one. This robber fly that I was photographing here shockingly stayed still and did not move at all. I took about seven different focus stacks of this robber fly alone, trying out different angles, and I am really happy with how these shots came out.
Focus stacking will require a lot of practice to finally start to get good at for most people. So the biggest key to improving is to keep practicing and practice your techniques. Don't let your failed attempt deter you from trying it again because failing is part of the process. So learn from your mistakes to see what you did wrong so you don't make those same mistakes again. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, then make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.